Hello and welcome back to Jacob's Books Corner where I am Jacob and welcome to another Fabulous Day on my channel. We are doing a book haul today. I have one, two, three, four, five. Yep, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Twenty different books to talk about. Three of these books are not here yet. They'll be here tomorrow, but my friend's coming, so in case they show up a little later, I'm just doing an update. You know, not a full fledge video if she's here, because it's gonna be a little awkward. So we're gonna hope that they get here before she's here. So that's the hope. But just in case, I have my book of the um my book of the month box coming in three different titles. One of those being a new release. Well, they all new releases and stuff. So I went to half price books and I got some books. I ordered some books off. Oh, there's only two books in there, so 19 books. I ordered some books off of Amazon. I also had a few books that I forgot to add in my last book haul, so I'll add them in this haul. Hopefully, or if not, we're gonna talk about them again. But yeah, it's gonna be kind of long, um, and we're gonna go through each and every book. Um, I'm gonna kind of explain what they're about, but also in general, if how excited I'm in, or if they're just like a collectible, because um, I think that's also important. But first things first, I'm gonna leave my unboxings till the last part because the second thing is an unboxing. I also have. Amazon unboxing. So, we have those. Alright, you guys ready? Alright. So we have Walking Disaster by Jamie McGuire. I decided to pick up Walking Disaster from Half Price Books. Um, this is the companion, or this is um, Travis's part story. Um, Travis's side of the story for Beautiful Disaster. Beautiful Disaster is one of my favorite hate to love romances. Um, not hate to love, because I, actually I think it is a hate to love romance, to be honest with you. But, it's like a romance that people love, love to hate on booktube that I absolutely adore. It is such a toxic relationship and I know that and I think everybody who reads it loves it but I think it's a part of the fun um, aspects of it. I don't like romanticizing violence and Travis himself is quite aggressive and so one I've been really curious to read Walking Disaster. I've read a few other uh, companion novels in the series but I've never actually read Travis's story from his head and so I think that would be really intriguing. Um, and I, this is a part of my, um, my reread series that I'm doing. And so you guys will take a poll if you want to read Walking Disaster or Beautiful Disaster, which I've not read in my two or three years since Reputation came out from Taylor Swift. Then we have Midnight Sun, which I'm in the middle of reading. I'm a hundred pages in, um, I'm somewhere, I'm one of those. <laughs> um, and the reason why I put down Midnight Sun is because I had to watch a cat and writing and things and so I'm really excited to finish it in October and my vlog will be up for in October. This is Edward's point of view of Twilight and I'm really really excited. I'm really really enjoying. I've really enjoyed the 100 pages that I've read um, and there's a lot of talking points and stuff so I'm really 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 exciting. It's just going to be a little bit later on um, out there for a vlog and I'm not going to cancel this one like I did for Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Um, that vlog was cancelled. This one however will still be a thing and I'll still read it with you guys. I'm very excited to have that video out for you guys. And then um, we have a few video, few books. I've started my collection of the Shadowhunter series. I love this series which is so weird because I hated it for so long. So I already have a video up on my channel. I'll try to link it in the cards or even down below and that is Reviewing Mortal Instruments which is City of Bones book one and City of Ashes which is book two. Now, these are two of the books I picked up. They were really, really cheap. They're like five bucks a piece or something like that. And so I decided I'd go ahead and grab them. And so I grabbed City of Bones and then I grabbed City of Ashes, which is book one and book two. I personally did not care for either of these novels that I can remember. I think this was better than this. But um, overall, these are just beginner novels into the Mortal Instruments. I highly recommend the series. It's so good. And then I picked up a book I've not read yet, but I'm been reading this whole series and so I want to own them all because I just I think I'm gonna love them all and this is City of Lost Souls which is book five in the Mortal Instruments trilogy um or Mortal Instruments series and I had originally grabbed um City of Glass as well and City I own City of Fallen Angels it's sitting somewhere I read that this month I don't know where I put that but it's somewhere or I read it last month I don't remember and I also grabbed Clockwork um Angel which is book one in the Immortal, um, the, the Immortal Devices series, which I am obsessed with, by the way. 
And so I had everything in my hands. It just ended up being all too expensive for my liking that I was willing to pay that day. So I just bought three of them and this was the last one. I have no idea what this is about. I also don't want to read the back cover. Um, I'm reading them in publication order and so I'm in the middle of Clockwork Prince and I'm loving it. I think it's great. I think they're phenomenal. I personally think the mortal, um, the internal life is the infertile, the in Thirtle, oh my god. The Immortal Devices is much better than the Mortal Instruments. The inter the Infernal Devices is much better than the Immortal Instruments. In my personal opinion, I'm really hoping these last two books really do blow me away. I've heard amazing things of City of Lost Souls, but I also have heard amazing things of City, hold on, City of Heavenly Fire. And so I'm really excited to get to both those books. I'm very, very excited to finish that series. To move on to um, Dark Artifice and stuff like that. And then I started my collection for Cinder. Um, I don't The Lunar Chronicles. Yep, that's what this is. And this is Marissa Meyer series. This is book three. This is Cress. This is um, about particularly about Rapunzel. But this is my favorite, I think. I don't know. I don't know. Because I also said Winter was my favorite at one point. So it's either this or Winter. I don't really like Winter as a POV is the problem. I really like Cress as a POV. And I really like... And I didn't really care for Scarlet, and I thought Cinder was a great POV. Let me know in the comments below if I should read Ferris. But this story follows, this is a reimagine of uh, the fairy princesses. I was going to say Disney fairy princesses, but in reality, no. This is Grimm's fairy princesses. They always have been, they always will be. And the first one follows Cinder, which is a reimagining of Cinderella, and she is part lunar, which is part cyborg. She has a cyborg hand. Or no, she has a cyborg foot, that's what it is. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff goes on. The audiobooks are phenomenal, and I can't wait to binge these again. I think I'm gonna binge, I'm gonna start my rereads in January, I think, is how I'm gonna start the year with these. I'm so excited. I just finished Winter in January of this year, and I thought it was phenomenal. I can't wait. I think I might actually try to physically read them as well. So the goal is to collect those. So that's my, you know, I have two series I'm currently in the middle of collecting, and so that was a big part of this book haul. Another series that I love and adore that I never finished, um, that I'm also in the middle of collecting, is the Mara Dyer trilogy. So we have the Unbecoming of Mara Dyer, we have the Evolution of Mara Dyer. I don't actually think that's... I think this is book two. You know, I don't really know. Yes. And then we have the Retribution of Mara Dyer, which I've not been able to find. I'm collecting them as a paperback right now, and so I kind of want the third one in the paperback. And I read the first one. I thought it was a phenomenal, trashy thing. I do understand there's a lot of problems with this. But I just really love how I flew through it. And it was so big. They're like 500 or close to 500 pages. This is actually like 440. Um, and I just flew through it in like two days. And I just loved it. And it had such a good feeling. And I was so intrigued and stuff. And so I have the second one to continue on with. This is much longer. But I do think this will be in my October TBR. So I'm really excited to jump back into this this world. I really like Mara Dye as a character. Um, now, something, you know, I read those. I read these when I was probably like a, a sophomore or junior in high school. I read the first one. So it's been a minute. I know it happened. So that's why I'm not going to reread. Um, and I do understand there's problems with Mara Dye as a character. And then you have the typical, like, Brit boy. But I like the typical Brit boy. So ultimately... This is fine. All right. And then we have the Anti-Virginity Pack by Katie Weismer, which I got a personalized signed copy for um, to Jacob from Katie Weismer. It's very simple. But um, that I paid for over her thing. I waited to get a actual copy of the book and stuff, which I'm going to have to buy another copy. I'm so excited because both this and... Um, so this kind of poison are getting like revamps and so I'm gonna have the originals. I'm so excited, like that's so exciting to me. But the book itself is beautiful. It came very nicely and stuff. So this follows a preacher's daughter who signs an anti-Virginia pact with her best friend and it's going around the school. It actually follows a whole bunch of other stuff. She is an atheist and so religion is a huge part of this. It became a, people, I just, I don't wanna get into it. And I have full reviews for this book. I have a non-spoiler review and I have a spoiler review. And that same thing goes with Sweetest Guy and Poison. Kay Weismer is probably my favorite author. Um, and she is one of my favorite booktubers as well. I fell in love with her channel before I read her material. And I think she is just a phenomenal writer. 
And so, yeah, there is a little bit of bias in this because I really do like the person behind, but I can't wait to talk about on October 1st, her next poetry collection. I have a special video. I have a non-spoiler review for the poems in the world already up, but I have a special video coming out for that. Um, she also sent us a tiny, like, um, her best friend made this, and I think they're cute, and this is Don't Believe Everything You Hear, and it's just, like, a little promotional thing for it. I absolutely love the cover. I'm very curious to see what the revamp is, and I can't listen to, I can't wait to listen to the audiobook of it either. And also, I'm really excited to reread it, and to highlight, and go through, and make notes and stuff in this book. I'm just very, very excited. Um, because it's, like, one of my favorite books of the year. If not my favorite book of the year. I don't really know. I've read 150 books so far. That's a lot of books to choose from. And then I have The Woman in the Window, um, the movie edition by A.J. Flynn. I've always wanted to read The Woman in the Window. I saw a perfect opportunity to grab it. It was in a donation pile at my library. It had been sitting in quarantine for like six days. And I was like, I'm going to do it. And I asked a co-worker if I was allowed. And obviously I'm allowed because... I work there and things and it's open grabs and we're not really supposed to be taking them. They're like, oh, I don't care. And so I got it and I think it's gorgeous. I really like the actual cover and stuff. I have a little complaints and stuff. The cover itself is not actually as long as the book is. It's a little weird. Also, the book itself is a total of like 430 pages. I thought this was so much longer, but I'm really looking forward to the movie, which I'm pretty sure just got commissioned off into... And Netflix, and so it might be a Netflix original. I think it's the one who bought it. Um, and so, yeah, we'll have to wait and see if I do read it or not. Let me know if you guys ever read The Woman in the Window and if it's worth it. I'm pretty excited. I think it's going to be really good. Or it's going to be really horrible. And I'm excited to go down that experience with us. All right. And then I bought Burn All Our Bodies Down because I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. And I really, really did enjoy this. This follows a girl who is just trying to figure out her life. Um, but it's written by Rory Power, who wrote Wilder Girls, and so that does mean what? <laughs> weird things ensue. Now, this book didn't get as weird, which I think a lot of people complained about. I personally also complained about it. I was expecting something a little more than what they gave us, but overall, I very, very much enjoyed it, and I really, really liked it, and the goal this year is to collect my four stars, my five stars, so when it comes to the end of the year, I have all my, my ten, you know, when I make my lists and stuff, I have all my my big my good books um and I don't think this is gonna make my list at the end of the year but it was a nice thriller and I wouldn't mind having it on a shelf when I get shelves I can't wait till I get shelves okay so these next three are books I've owned for a very long time these are not new releases these are just books I have in general um and I wanted to showcase them because I don't think I have so I decided to put them in the hall so we have more um more Happy Than Not, which I think is getting turned into a TV show? Correct me if I'm wrong. By Adam Severa. I have no idea what this is about, except that it... Okay, uh... Profound Moving New York Time. This is his debut. Brings to life a charged, dangerous, near-future summer in the Bronx. 16-year-old Aaron Soto is struggling to find happiness as her family tragedy leaves in reeling. He still remembers what happiness might feel like. This summer with the support of his girlfriend Genevieve, but his new best friend Thomas, who really gets Aaron about his past and his future, as Thomas and Aaron get closer, Aaron's hear things about himself that threaten to shatter his newfound con contentment, a revolutionary memory. I know it has to do, I guess it's about finding sexuality and things. I did not realize that. Um, but it was really, really praised and stuff. I've not had the best luck with Adam Tavares writing. I don't really know if I really like how he writes his characters. Um, Infinity Sun I had a lot of problems with earlier this year. Well, if it's us, I didn't like his side of the story. You could definitely tell between Ben and, um, the other character. I can't think of their name. Which one was Adam, which one was not. And I just didn't, I don't really know if I really enjoy how he writes his characters. But that being said, I still want to read it. I'm still curious, and I'm a person who, I read, like, two of their novels. I want to read their backlog. And so I have another one. <laughs> And this is actually what I'm really looking forward to, and this is They Both Die at the End. This is a futuristic world of where you get a text message saying um, that you're going to die that night, or you're going to die during that day, and then you can find somebody to spend your last day together with. And so this is about that. It's a love story, They Both Die at the End type of thing. I've heard I would cry my eyes out, which is why I've not read it yet, and I'm just not really ready for that type of depression. But who knows? We, we have October. 
which is going to be another week, one of those trying to read a book a day type of things. And then I have Bonfire by um, Kristen Ritter. Kristen Ritter is one of my favorite actresses. Uh, she is best known for Jessica Jones, uh, The Girl in Apartment B, The Girlfriend for Jesse Peekman, and Season 2 of Bad. You know, that's her on the back. Kristen Ritter. And so I was really reluctant to pick up her novel. Um, I watched a lot of interviews before I read it, and she was very invested. And once again, she is a a producer and things at heart and so she realized that the source material had a great following then they get picked up into a pilot which was her original idea for this that is all she's about either way and um so she wrote it as a book which this is a environmentalist um abby williams she's an environmentalist and she goes back to her hometown for a crime, she's an environmental lawyer, and she ends up discovering things about her past. I absolutely adored Bonfire when I read it. I also, one, I didn't read the physical copy, and so I don't know if there's any more problems directly with the words. I heard some people complain about some sentence structures and stuff like that in here, which I'm sure there probably is problems like that, that a nice editor should have helped fix, if I'm being honest with you, and so, that's not so much her fault, but the person, whoever was her editor and stuff. Either way, um, I think I really, really liked it. I really liked how the story is crafted. I liked how dark it got. I liked how scary the characters got and things. Uh, the twist wasn't particularly amazing to me. I did guess it, but I'm one who guesses the twist, so it's not really... I would take it with a grain of salt. Um, I also personally think if you've read a, a lot of thrillers... It's probably nothing spectacular, but if you love someone who's not an actual person who solves crimes, goes back and solves an old crime, this is probably the book for you. And then I have an unboxing, which I'm so excited about. Oh my god. One of these books is like becoming like one of my, it has been on my list for a long time now, and it came out on like Tuesday. I'm sure you guys can already guess it. I'm so excited. This shitty packaging, I tell you, it's just so annoying. And then tomorrow we'll have three other books. Two books that I'm super duper looking forward to. One book I can't wait. Like, I think I might dive in as soon as I, as soon as it gets here. Um, to help try to cure this stupid thing that I'm going through. But the other two I'm curious about. They're both kind of thrillers. One of these is not a thriller. It's actually a fantasy, and I'm so looking forward to it. And it's right there. Oh my god. Alright. I got it. Alright, the first one is I'm Thinking of Ending Things, which is a book I just read. I read it um, last month. Yeah, I read it last month. And this is a short little thing. I actually don't like the feeling of this at all. Also, why is it another one of those? I think I knew that, though, when I bought it. Is there questions? this? What are, what are these? What is this back of this book? Uh, oh! So it's like the book club. I guess it's probably if you... Oh, a call. See, that'd be interesting. I'd love to have read that. But this is about a girlfriend and a boyfriend who are on a car trip. They're a relatively new couple, which I guess I'd never really picked up on. I don't know, I'd say they're a, a relatively, yeah, I'd say they're probably a relatively new couple, and the girl is going to visit um, this man's family, and um, she is thinking of ending things with him. Part, like, I would say probably the first half of the book takes place in a car, and then the second half is much more of a thriller. The first half is a lot more psychological, it's also, it builds so much on so many different characteristics of just, like, normal human interactions and stuff. I really liked it. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. I quite enjoyed it. I really hated the ending. I thought it was super straightforward. And then I go and I, I read, so many other people re read it, and they don't think the ending's straightforward. And I just, I'm just like, how do I, I don't understand. I thought it was so, like it had one of the more cliche endings in my opinion. And so I didn't really like it. I thought it was very, very stupid. But. I still gave it 4 out of 5 stars because I think there's enough here to talk about. It's the same thing with Tara Jane and Reed whenever I, do, whenever I do get around to doing her wrap-up, which should be sooner than later because I'm forgetting her books. Um, 
they have such strong conversations that starters are just in I mean I have vlogs where we just talk about paragraphs that's how amazing this book can be and so I just think that's something we should keep in mind okay let's move on to oh it's so much smaller than I thought it was gonna be that's great that makes me happy I thought it's gonna be huge it's not oh but the words are kind of small so maybe that's why it's so small oh my god do you know this cemetery boys got it <laughs> All right, this is by Aiden Thomas, um, who is, if I'm not mistaken, let me make sure, I, I want to make sure I get everything correct. This is one of the first ever, yeah, a queer trans Latinx, oh my god, my heart sings so loudly. Um, and he's the first trans author to ever make it on the best times, New York's, New York Seller's Best Times. And I'm so excited to read this book. It is so hyped on booktube. Everybody's reading it. I have no idea what it's about. I think it's about a boy who falls in love with a boy. Hold on. Um, and it's like a ghost. Right? Uh, let's see here. Bad boy. Oh my god. It's about a bad boy. Oh, I'm gonna love this. I'm so excited. I've never had really good really good moments with um fantasy even YA fantasy at that which is what this is this is a total YA fantasy but look at that cover that cover screams beautifulness I can't wait to read this I can't wait um mm -hmm. it's gonna be one of the first books I pick up when I start reading again like I said I have a few others I think I'm gonna pick up another one that's gonna be later on in this book haul tomorrow when I come back to finish the book haul I'm so excited this is gonna be one of those top ones I'm just I cannot wait to read it I can't wait I can't wait I can't wait I'm so happy I got it oh my gosh I cannot wait I cannot wait okay with that being said though I'm, gonna, uh, I'm not gonna I will see you guys um in the next clip which is unboxing a um book of the month box so I'll see you guys then okay hi back uh filling the rest of the book haul I got my book of the month box that has an address on it I have my book of the month box I'm very, very excited. There's a book in here that I'm, like, super duper excited to read. So I'm really happy that I ordered it. Because I don't think I can order it next month. Um, I might be making a very big life purchase. That has so many more meanings to it than you would think. So I'm happy that I got it. Alright. So we're going to go through each book. I have three books in here. Um, as I had two saved. And so I only paid $10 for the box. Which is really good because these are all hot, you know, all are hardback. So the first one is a new debut, which is yeah, and that is Winter Counts by Deva Huska Wannable Wyden. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, this is the book that I chose for this month. Um, this is a Indian Reserve murder mystery, well, murder novel. Vigil Wounded Horse is a local enforcer on the Rosebound Indian Reserve in South Dakota. When justice is denied by the American legal system or the tribal council, Vigil is hired to deliver his own punishment, the kind that's hard to forget. But when the heroine makes his way onto reserve and finds Vigil's nephew, his vigilism suddenly becomes personal. He enlists to help his ex-girlfriend and sits out and learn where the drugs are coming from and how to make them stop. Crime fiction type of thing. It's not very good. It's not the most interesting, I should say, out of these selections. I think, personally, this is my least favorite selections that Book of the Month has had in recent times. And so, this is the one I chose because it sounded the most interesting to me. I'm I'm excited to give it a try, you know, just to, to, to shoot the old shot. Um, also, it's, I really liked Winner's, what is that called? Winner Circle, it's with um, Emily Osman, nope, Emily Olsen, is that right? Third Olsen sister, who is Wanda, um, and Jeremy Renner, who is, you know, and I really like that. It's also made, yeah, and so I was kind of excited. Um, this also has winter in it, and so maybe it does take place during the winter time, and so I'm curious, and we'll see, we'll see. Alright, the next book, which is also not the book that I'm looking forward to the most, is Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moron Garcia. I don't know what this is. I think it's a horror novel. Maybe it's a thriller. So, um, 
comes this reimagining of the classic gothic suspense novel, a story about an isolated mansion in 1950 Mexico and the brave socialite drawn to its treacherous secrets. He is trying to poison me. You must come for me. Naomi, you have to save me. So I've heard amazing things about Mexican Gothic and I really just wanted to own it myself. It's also very short. All these books are very short, which is nice. Um, I don't know. This is probably like just 300 pages. Yeah, just 300 pages. Oh, I saw Hannibal. Maybe, maybe with Catalina. I'm not really sure. But I'm really excited. Once again, this deals with another set of culture and stuff um, that I'm just really, really curious about. I just want to read more from and I'm trying to really diversify my reads and stuff. Um, read some, some different points of views that are not like mine. And so I chose this. Also, it's a suspense novel, which I tend to do very, I tend to like a lot. So, you know, um, yeah, that's. I'm quite excited. Alright, the last book we've talked about is the book that I'm most looking forward to. It's also the thickest book, of course, and that is Beach Read by Emily Henry. Beach Read is follows two characters, a male and a female. One is a romance writer, one is a, I want to say a thriller writer? Is that what it is? Yeah, he, like, he's a thriller writer. Alright, he's like, like a spy novel, something out of those lines. And both of them are in a writing slump for the newest, latest novel that they're writing. And so they trade stories to write them. And it's a romance set on the beach while they write their stories. I'm so excited for this. This is one of my most anticipated books. Uh, and so I was really happy to get it and things. And so, yeah. Guys, that brings us to the end of our book haul. <laughs> um, they also come with the Book of the Month stickers and stuff. I don't have the other books. The other books that I, I hauled are uh, sitting over there in partial stack. And then up there... And another partial stack because of like book hauls and so we do have these three which are cute i'm quite excited um to to try all three of these books this month coming up in october and so these will definitely be on my tbr um so yeah if you guys enjoy this video please give me a big fat thumbs up don't come down below which book do you think i should read first is there any books in here that you're like oh i need a video for that i want to know your guys is you know your full opinions like i'm pretty sure i'm going to be reviewing cemetery cemetery boys but is there any of the book of the month box that you want me to read specifically let me know in the comments down below if you have any ideas for videos going forward but yeah if you guys enjoyed it go ahead and do all the fun youtube stuff and i'll talk to you guys soon thank you for watching goodbye